the third and really the fourth of our urban models is the multi-nuclei, sometimes called the multi-nodal model. Third and fourth because it was modified. So it was the third and then the third became modified some several decades later. This model was created by Chauncey Harris and Edward Ullman in 1945. The basic premise is that as cities expand, they become increasingly complex with growing numbers of central places, hubs, activities, and CBDs. I think we kind of know that if you live in Southern California, that we have a complicated urban landscape. Although there are some things we can point to and say, well, there's downtown LA, that definitely looks like a CBD, okay? Just as types of employment change through time, so too the focus of the city and the center of activity can change through time. And as a result of that, create an increasingly complicated urban landscape. It's a kind of more radical alteration of the concentric zone and sector models that preceded it. So those models set the stage for this last model. People are kind of attracted, I guess you could say, to the various nodes or centers, as you're going to see in this model, depending on their skills and abilities. Los Angeles really has kind of become like this. If you think about it, it's really very much like this where there are people moving in all sorts of directions to work, depending on what they do. In fact, if you think about our urban landscape in Southern California, you know that there are many different CBDs here. Long Beach in the port zone, which is tied to the Los Angeles port zone, so the Long Beach port and the LA port, the biggest port complex in the United States. Santa Ana and the court and legal related services tied to the government of Orange County, which is focused in Santa Ana. Even I don't know, Anaheim and Disneyland. You know, there's a lot of flow in and out of that area. So this model provides a more realistic view of the American urban structure, really. So take a look at the first iteration of this from 1945. And you can see that, indeed, there's still a central business district. There it is right there. And you can see wholesale and light manufacturing. So there's a manufacturing area that, you know, in the central business, I mean, in the concentric zone model, encircled the CBD. Okay, so now it's just right next to it. And then you can see all of the various residences and then heavy manufacturing out here. So they need a lot of space for big factories. So those are out on the edges of the city where the property values are lower and they can get bigger chunks of land. Then outlying business districts like this. I mean, this reminds me a little bit of Irvine. If you think about it, it's kind of like that along the uh, 405 freeway where you have all of that business stuff that's related to the airport, the Santa Ana airport. And then you can see residential suburbs, industrial suburb out here, okay? So this is the original model, more complicated, still a lot of residential area. And then this is the updated version from 1997 when Harris decided to alter this model with a peripheral model. So what that means is this. This means that there's a peripheral belt in the vicinity of the main urban structure that also exhibits a form of dominance. So the peripheral areas are exhibiting their own dominance. It's not just the CBD that is kind of pulling everything in. That there are a whole bunch of these nodes or nuclei that pull in people, jobs, money, residences, the whole thing. The peripheral belt is part of the overall metropolitan area, so it's all part of the same thing, the whole met the same metropolitan area. It's not the same as, you know, saying Los Angeles is the same part of the same urban complex as Dallas, because it's not. But we do know that Santa Ana, for example, is part of the urban complex of Los Angeles. Nevertheless, it has its own characteristics completely and totally, and people may very well work in Santa Ana and live in the area of Santa Ana and never go into Los Angeles. So it might have very little to do with the larger urban complex and structure as a whole. I mean, just think LA and Orange counties and how they are similar, the same, and yet very separate. Or Riverside and Ventura counties and how they interact with Los Angeles County. You can see, once again, there is indeed a CBD. There's a central business district that's, that's here. But notice that everything else is spread around. 
Even out here, we have the airport complex, which is kind of similar to what I just said with Santa Ana Airport, right? Um, or combined employment and shopping area, right? That makes sense that people go into shopping areas. I don't know, maybe this is a version of Disneyland in some ways. Service area, airport complex, right? I mean, all of these things. So those all draw people and people work in them and they may not actually go into the central business district. Okay, done with the models. Now we're gonna move on and do a little application and then some more models.